this is that weird part where we all, where we all stare at each other for about five minutes, waiting for others. Hey, Summer. Hey, Lacey. Who else? Who else we have here? Um, Brooke, Lisa, Raina. Uh, sorry. Even morning. Just morning, morning. Justin's coming in. Lisa. Lacey, Summer, Mickey. Somebody's, I heard somebody's dog earlier. <clears throat> that was in my back, my neighbor's yard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, in the Orange County, everybody's so close to each other. Oh, that's right. You're you're uh, you're you're out uh, out west, Lorena. Yes. How's how's things going out there? Yeah, okay. I think they're opening slowly but surely. Um, you know, but uh, it's there. <laughs> Are you, yeah. Well, I know you. You got a lot of friends and family there, so I'm sure you're enjoying yeah. that. Oh yeah, that part. Yes, everything else is. Uh, you know, it's good. The weather's nice right now. Oh yeah, I'll bet. Well, it's luckily it's it's nice here today too. Um, yeah. It's out and it's beautiful. Says you're still connecting. Try again, Chad. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, everybody's still with us. Yes. Uh, hey, hey Shelly. Um, uh, we got Glenn in the house. Tracy, Tiffany. Got it, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna start real quick because again, I, I don't want to drag this out too long. We'll try to keep it, um, you know, 45 minutes ish. Um, obviously, if, if somebody needs to to depart sooner than that, um, <clears throat> that's fine. We'll we'll record um, all these these meetings so that anybody can go back later. Everybody can hear me, okay? Lisa, can you hear me? Hear you Glenn. fine. All right. Um, um, uh, uh, sorry about that. Ryan is gonna is gonna uh, Ryan Jet, uh, one of our preferred lenders, is gonna come in towards the end of the call um, and and talk a little bit about um, his side of things. And um, I know not everybody uses Ryan, and that's fine. But um, it's always you know not a bad idea to talk to a lender every now and then, and maybe he can give us some some input as far as you know interest rates go and things like that. I know some of y'all probably realize that interest rates are creeping up a little bit. Um, nothing crazy, but um, uh, we'll talk to Ryan a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, um, I've got a few things I want to talk about with everybody. Um, give, 
give some other folks some opportunities to talk about something if they want. Um, but I, I want to briefly talk about number one, um, uh, these these new uh, trek forms, these new promulgated forms that some of y'all have probably heard about. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 mostly changes. There are a couple of new forms, but the 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 biggest issue is is the changes to um, forms that we already use, and and really none of the changes are that big of a deal. It's, it's not anything that's going to scare anybody. You know, the biggest change that I see um, uh, is is actually in regards to the option fee. Um, you know, now you know it's it's they've made it to where the option fee can be taking directly to the escrow to the title company, whereas before we had to worry about coordinating, um, getting that option fee money to directly to the seller, you know, how are we going to get it to them? Are we going to PayPal it? Are we going to FedEx it? You know, my clients in California, how are we going to do it? Well, now we don't have to worry about that. Uh, now the option fee and the earnest money fee can both be delivered to the escrow agent, to the title company. Um, however, you would typically send, um, uh, the earnest money. Uh, it can be in a wire. It can be in a FedEx. Um, uh, but so the, the escrow officer now is, is going to be able to um, accept that money for us uh, and take that off of our plate, which is nice. Um, um, it's, a, it's a nice, a nice thing, and uh, it should be pretty clear and in, 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 uh, cut clear if you, if you read it on the forms. But if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, again, that's really one of the biggest changes. Um, everything else was just kind of like adding and moving things around a bit. Um, uh, there, there was some things added about security systems that are not fixtures. Um, and I think, um, you know, the reason for that is, you know, nowadays, uh, I think we've probably all been through this either with our sellers or with our buyers is nowadays everybody has like um, uh, cameras and um, you know, motion sensors and, and uh, you know, the, the ring doorbells and things like that. Well, they've tried to kind of incorporate those into the contract. Um, and also there's a section in there that talks about um, turnover of those devices. Um, now, not all of them are going to be turned over. Some of them, the sellers are going to want to keep, you know, they're, they're, they may, you know, exclude them from the contract. That's fine. But any 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 devices like the ring doorbell, for instance, that gets turned over um, during or you know after the the close, um, there's language now in the contract that that requires the seller to disconnect those devices from their accounts. I know I've run into the problem recently where a buyer calls me and Chad, I can't I can't get into this dang Zoom Zoom uh, doorbell because the previous owner still has it tied to their account. Um, so. Trek is trying to fix some of those issues. Um, uh, so that's that's another one of the changes you'll see on the contract. Um, they, uh, they added a, a, a place on the one to four for a team name. If you're if you're if you have a team or you're part of a team, um, you're able to um, to add that team name onto um, onto the one to four contract. Um, they there there's a section in the one to four where they talk about leases um and when, when they say leases they're they're talking about uh you know a residential lease where maybe the seller has a tenant in place but they're also talking about leases like uh solar panel leases and uh propane tank leases uh so they added some language in there to protect buyers and make things more clear when you know turning over a home um so that everybody knows what's going on so that you don't buy a house close on it and then a month later, you realize that the previous seller, that the propane tank sitting in the backyard is not actually owned. It's leased from, you know, a, a local company. So they want to clear that up so that everybody is familiar and, 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 you know, and it's something that we deal a lot with. I know a lot of us are selling houses with propane tanks. Uh, some of us are selling houses with um, um, uh, solar panels. So uh, there's, some, there's some things added. So, you know, really, you know, everybody just needs to take some time to read through the new contract. Um, now, I will tell you that I, I looked um, at zip forms, you know, where you can, you can go through all the libraries and look at the different forms, and I'm not seeing um, the new forms yet available through zip forms. Uh, I had to go to 
uh, the Trek website and I had to go, they had it there. And then I also went to the TAR website and they had it there. So these forms don't actually go into effect officially until April 1st. That's when they become mandatory. Um, they, they're encouraging people to go ahead and start using them. So, uh, but again, you may not find them in zip forms. You may have to go to TAR, you may have to go to Trek, um, but I'm going to keep an eye on zip forms and the places that we typically get our, our documents from and keep you all updated on that. Uh, so that when April 1st comes around, you know, I'm going to remind everybody a few days before, Hey, we've got, you know, a week before these forms have to be used. So I want to make sure everybody has them at their, at their disposal. Um, and, uh, um, you know, is ready to use them and knows how to use them. But again, there's nothing, nothing crazy going on. You know, the, I guess, and one of the biggest things too is there's two new forms, uh, but again, those have to do with leases. They have to do with a residential lease or an equipment lease. Um, so I'm going to send out an email, probably more, you know, talk more about these changes. Um, unless is any is there anybody right now that has any questions about the changes um, that, that that maybe they're they're worried about or, or confused about that you want to talk about now? Does everyone have, have a copy? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Does everyone have a copy of the drafts that were sent out that shows the corrected um, changes? Yeah, I have them. Okay. Anybody that doesn't, just let us know and we'll be sure. I think Mickey sent one out already, but if we need to, we can send another one out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send up an email in regards to the new forms and some reminders and um, you know obviously if if a new if, if a you know if you send in a contract for review or even for you know an executed contract and one of the new forms is not used uh, after April first then we'll 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 be sure to bring that up and, and get it fixed so um, uh, moving on um, um, also part of the contract this kind of has to do with with yesterday I posted a video on Facebook uh, that had to do with um, uh, a, kind of like an investigation that the Department of Justice was doing with NAR. Um, somebody brought it to the attention of the Department of Justice that, um, you know, that NAR wasn't doing a good job with, um, you know, uh, I guess, um, being upfront about certain things um, uh, in, in the real estate industry, particularly commissions. Um, you know, commissions offered by sellers, you know, commissions offered through the MLS. So, you know, there was a, there was a lawsuit, you know, where, where the Department of Justice called up NAR and said, hey, y'all have to fix this. We've got some issues with it. Um, and, and, it and NAR did. NAR, um, you know, NAR made some changes. Um, and, and, and one of those changes is actually incorporated into the new one to four contract um, on the last page. Um, we've all seen it. Um, let's see, well, it's on page page ten, uh, the broker information form down towards the bottom of that page. Um, you know, there's that part that allows you to enter in the agreed upon commission uh, between the the brokers. All right, the brokerages. Um, they've changed the wording up on that a little bit, um, and, and honestly, they it, it's it's not even all that necessary most of the time because usually we have an agreement through the MLS. If we're showing a property that is, um, is, is on the MLS, we already have you know, somewhat of a, a contract between us and that other brokerage saying, hey, you're offering 3%, we're bringing you a buyer, you know, uh, that's what it's gonna be. But they, they added some, some language to this to try to appease the Department of Justice um, and it really all comes down to, you know, they just, they want there to be, you know, less, you know, um, secrets, I guess, and in, in, in how we get paid and what we get paid. Uh, in fact, you know, one of the agreements that, that NAR agreed upon with, with the Department of Justice is that now our commissions are going to be publicly available. Um, so, and I don't know how they're going to do it, but it may be through realtor.com, um, but they, they want it to be, you know, whereas before, um, nobody really knew what a buyer's agent was being offered as far as commission, unless they had access to the MLS, right? 
um, or a contract was executed. Well, now the Department of Justice has said, well, we want it to be known to everybody exactly what um, a buyer's agent is being offered by these sellers or by these brokerages to bring buyers. Um, and the reason for that is we've all heard it and perhaps maybe even guilty of it a little bit. You know, you see a listing that is offering one and a half percent and you're like, ugh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. You know, I don't want to show my client to that house. You know, obviously, you know, I think most of us are, are ethical enough to not do that, but it, it crosses our mind. We're like, ew, gross. You know, they're only offering one and a half percent, two percent. I hope they hate the house. Well, you know, there, there's been some people take it too far where they're not showing their clients the house because of that. Um, uh, and it's created some issues in the industry that have come to the attention of the Department of Justice, um, you know, complaints from um, from homeowners, you know. So, uh, again, they're they're trying to clear that up and, and just make everything, you know, known, you know, um, they don't want any secrets. Um, but so keep that in mind, you know, everybody's going to know what you potentially stand to make on a particular sale of a home um, moving forward. Um, no big deal. You know, it's usually 3%. Sometimes it's less. Um, uh, I know Justin and I have been talking about that a little bit. Um, and I, I mean, I want to talk more about what, what, uh, what him and I talked about eventually, but, um, what else? Um, anybody have any questions about that? I mean, it's, it, it, I know some of y'all probably heard about that, you know, the, the lawsuit against NAR and, um, you know, evidently it's, it's, it's been settled. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, you know, it's, it, at the end of the day, it didn't, it didn't do much to us. You know, we're not, we're not changed anything. We're not, we're not, you know, it's not going to make it to where we make less money necessarily. Um, but um, it's just, we have to be more up, up, you know, up, uh, uh, up front with that, those kind of things with the public. Um, whereas before we kind of kept it all, you know, uh, to ourselves or between agents and brokers. So anybody got any questions about that 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 issue read that video that i posted on facebook not from read it watch that video that i posted on facebook it, it's it's like a five minute video um it, it'll help kind of clear things up and and ease your mind a little bit if you happen to have been worried about that um uh, moving on though um i wanted to talk real briefly about the current market everybody knows the market is we've got some issues out there um two issues really number one um, the issue is lack of inventory and number two, you know, rising prices, which you know, they both kind of go hand in hand. So I know we all have buyers right now that we probably just can't find them anything because there's just nothing to sell. There's nothing for them out there. Inventory is super low. So um, I, I wanted to bring that up. It's no secret. Everybody, everybody's feeling that, um, you know, um, I, I see it, you know, I see it because less contracts are being executed right now. Um, you know, typically this time of the year, we, we would see a lot more contract coming in, but that's not, that's not happening. And, and it's ma mainly because there's just a lack of inventory um, right now. But good news is, is I feel like that's changing. Um, new home builders are building homes as fast as they can. I know communities that have 50 homes uh, under construction right now. Um, so that's gonna be really helpful for us. Um, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we also need to take this opportunity to really focus on, um, our business, uh, and, and, and to keep our heads above water. Um, we need to focus on, um, on listings. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's no more important time than in a market like we're in right now, uh, to have listings, you know, listings, there's that saying, you have to list the last. This is where that came from. So, uh, you know, keep your keep your eye out for any potential listings. Um, don't you know that's uh, that that's just it's it's um it's it's kind of a sure way to get a deal right now. You know, you've got these listing agents that have all these listings. You know, they're gonna they're gonna get a sell. But then on the other side, you know, you've got twenty buyers making an offer, twenty agents making an offer on that one listing, and most of them are not you know going to get it. So uh, super important. And we're, we're doing some things on our end. Uh, I'm going to let Michael talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, what, what we've got, we've got someone that's, that's doing some dialing. Um, and, and Michael, do you want to, you want to talk briefly about 
uh, what we got Josh doing. Michael. Sorry about that. Didn't want to unmute. Um, yeah, so Chad and I have been looking into a system. Um, it's called Red X. They have a, a cool CRM and dollar system set up. And so what we're, what we're getting through Central Texas and uh, Sabor and also HAR uh, is all the expireds that are coming daily. We're also getting FISBOs, um, another platform called GeoLeads. And, and what that does is it uploads on a daily basis and gives Josh um, all these numbers that he's able to call. And, and the hope is that once, once we get a little more proficient at it, since we're just getting rolling, is that he's going to be able to um, send us some appointments. And then once, once we get those appointments, uh, potentially our potential clients that would like to meet with someone, we'll set that up with different agents and just put, put everyone on a rotation to be able to meet with those particular clients that will hopefully be all sellers. So um, I think it's gonna be a really good platform for us. It's just gonna be a matter of, uh, it may take a couple of months to really start seeing the, the benefits of, of our efforts in there. Uh, Josh has been, been doing some training um, as well as he also has some telemarketing experience. So I think, I think it's gonna be very, very beneficial for us. So yeah. when, when those particular leads come through, um, I will probably initially make contact with each individual agent in the different areas and, and see uh, what we can do to set up an appointment. Um, what I've discussed with him is if he does have someone that's hot and needs to, and is wanting uh, an appointment at their home within a 48 hour time period, um, that he contact me directly and we'll expedite that as soon as possible. Otherwise, I told him to give a little bit of leeway so that you as an agent can set up that appointment and be a little more prepared going in. So, um, but that's, that's just getting started. So it may take, it may take a couple of weeks before we can get an appointment. I believe as of yesterday, there were over 300 fresh leads in the system um, with a total of, of about 9,000 leads. So he's going to have a lot of phone calls to make. Yeah. Yeah. So, and hopefully that'll, you know, provide some opportunities for everybody. Um, you know, that's the whole point of it. Um, we're, we're, we'll, we'll keep working on that, keep pumping money into it and hopefully it'll pay off um, and get us more listings. You know, that's, that's what it's all about right now is, is the listings uh, the areas that Josh covers are pretty broad. You know, he's doing, you know, uh, you know, it's going to, they're going to be a lot of San Antonio area, you know, um, uh, but also here in New Braunfels, Comal County. Um, he's also doing some work um, to, to hopefully get some leads over in his area so we can, you know, get things going over there a little bit more, but um, they're not going to be, you know, the, 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 these leads are going to be a little different. And, and when I say that, I mean, you know, these are people that we're calling who, didn't really plan on using a realtor. Um, you know, if they're a FISBO, they think they can do it themselves. Um, you know, so they, they, they're, they're going to be a little cooler, but, um, you know, uh, or they're going to be expireds where they've been on the market for six months and they just didn't sell, you know, and, and there's probably a reason, you know, a reason is there's something wrong. It's overpriced, you know, what have you. Um, but there's opportunities in there and, and, you know, there, there's going to be opportunities. You just, you have to be prepared, um, you know, to, to go at it the correct way. Um, and we're going to talk more about that in the future and make sure that people are prepared and know what they're getting themselves into. Um, but again, lots of opportunities in, in what we're doing with, with Josh, um, uh, with these FISBOs, expireds. Um, the geo leads, um, it's going to be good. You know, like Michael said, it's going to take some time to get going, but we're going to stick with it uh, and, uh, and hopefully produce some, some more listings for everybody. Um, so uh, what else? Um, downtown New Braunfels, um, our space down there, you know, uh, historically we've had both spaces, number six and number seven. Uh, the number six office there in the old uh, uh, old uh, city hall building uh, is where Michael and I have been for a few years. And then we've had the other space available as well. Uh, we're, we're, we're letting number space number six 
where Michael and I used to be, we're letting that go um, at the end of this month um, and just keeping space number seven. Um, uh, for those of you that have been to that space recently, you'll notice there's some new furniture. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, and, and we're still working on getting that place fixed up and, and making it nice. So, you know, there's, it's always a place for, for an agent or, or a few agents to go and, you know, hang out or meet, meet a client, whatever you need, just to kind of give us a little, a little presence downtown and keep our sign out there. And, you know, we'll see how that goes. I think Justin's there right now. Uh, Justin, is it just you at, at that office right now? Uh, no, it's me and Shelly here. Oh, yeah. Shelly's there. Okay, cool. Um, and I know, um, I know, you know, a few of, of, of you utilize that space on occasion, whether it be just to print something out or um, meet a client or whatever. So we're going to keep that space. Um, and, and, you know, we're always, you know, looking at that, you know, if we, if it, if it comes to where we need more space, you know, as we grow, or if more and more people want to work, you know, in the office, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Um, but it just seems like, you know, a lot of us work from home and, um, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to carry on any space that we don't need. We want to put that money into, into leads and, and other things that we need. So, um, uh, again, you know, by the end of this month, that that corner suite number six will be uh, will no longer have access to that. Um, and okay, um, I guess sorry, I got a list here. Um, hey Chad, you mind yo, if I jump in real? Quick? Go ahead, Justin. Justin, do you have? Um, are you using your phone or are you using your computer right now? Can you do a panoramic of the room? I'm on my computer. I'll give it a shot. Oh, okay. So Justin's, Justin did a great job building some furniture. I don't know how well you can see it right now, but it, it really is set up to where I, I believe four or five agents could work in there pretty efficiently. So um, really appreciate you for doing that, Justin. It looks really nice over there. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You thank guys, you, Justin. Yeah, you guys get by there and utilize that space if you can. Yeah. And we're going to, we're, we're, we still got some other things that we want to do over there to make it a little nicer. And, you know, usually there's, there's one or two agents over there, which is fine. You know, there's, there's never four or five, but um, you know, uh, like Michael said, you know, four people could work over there um, and uh, uh, just, you know, just know that it's there if you need it. Um, and, and, and again, you know, so is this, 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 this 306 space. Uh, there's not as much room over here for a bunch of people, but, you know, we've, 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 um, we've made it to where there, there is space for people to come by, uh, with a client or, um, you know, to write a quick contract or have a coffee break, whatever you need. Um, you know, we don't, we're not trying to keep people out of here. Um, uh, uh it's just, uh, you know, just another place on, on, on a different side of town for you to, for you to come by, um, when you need to, uh, everybody's got the code to the front door. It's their last four digits of their phone number. Um, and what else? Um, uh, so here's kind of the last thing that I'm going to talk about. Um, and then, um, uh, we're going to bring Ryan in here. What time is it? I can't, I can't see. I guess I need a clock. Anybody know what time it is? <laughs> it's 1030, Jeff. 1030, bud. Yeah. Tiffany. 1030. Uh, great. Uh, for me. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, Lorena's a little <laughs> this. <laughs> um, so uh, Mickey has sent out an, e an email to everybody with uh, a lot of information um, on our broker agent agreement forms. Um, so most of that you'll see is just standard stuff from TAR. They're they're TAR forms that just talk about you know, the legalities of you being a, a, a private contractor, you're not an employee, this and that. Um, uh, but then we've added to it um, a, a specific agreement between uh, MidCity and our agents. Uh, and 99% of what's on that form is, is our, our policies that have been in place, um, you know, for, for a long time. We're just clarifying everything there. Um, nothing new. Um, you know, we're not changing splits or, 
um, anything like that. It's really just about making things clear, um, you know, when it comes to splits and caps and, you know, Zillow and, and, and you know, uh, uh, bringing on new agents and, you know, things like that. Things that we've always done um, is just kind of clarifying. There are a few new things there um, uh, that really um, both have to do with um, e and insurance and the rising cost of e and insurance. Um, you know, something that, that Michael and I have always offered is, is e and insurance to our agents. Um, that's getting more and more difficult as the, as it rises in price. Not only are we growing, but, you know, the cost of insurance is, is on the rise. Um, so we've, we've put in place a couple of, a couple of things that is going to help ease the price um, of that insurance so that we can continue to provide, you know, insurance for everyone. Um, and one of those is the uh, two and a half percent um, uh, transaction fee after you cap out. Um, so you cap out, um, you know, you've, 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 you've met your $15,000 cap. Um, and then going forward after that, um, there is going to be a transaction fee of two and a half percent of the total commission, which on average is about $150. Um, and that's really, again, just a way for us to help pay for e &O insurance, help with the admin cost of things, um, and just, you know, going to allow us to keep providing, you know, good, uh, good service to you guys and, and, and help. Um, the other thing is a, a fee if you are selling your own home. Um, you know, we're, we're not requiring anyone to pay themselves a commission if they, in Mid-City List, if you list your own home, for instance, we're not requiring you to, to, to sign a listing agreement that says you're going to pay 6%. You're going to pay three to the buyer and three to the agent. Um, we don't require that at all. So obviously, most of us are not going to take a commission on our own home. However, what we put into place is a, um, a fee so if, if, if Michael puts his own home on the market and doesn't offer himself a commission or a commission to MidCity, then there's a $200 fee um, that is going to be charged to the, to the, to the listing agent um, by the brokerage. Uh, and again, that is, is, is going to help us continue to pay for the E&O insurance. Um, part of the reason why um, our E&O insurance is a little more expensive is because of the fact that we allow our agents to sell their own homes. Um, other brokerages, um, Keller Williams, I think even, they won't allow their agents to sell their own homes, their own properties um, for liability reasons. Um, and the reason is, is to, to cover that uh, under e &O insurance uh, for a company like Keller Williams is very, very expensive. Um, it's also very expensive for us, um, but, I think, you know, I think it's a good perk for our agents to be able to sell their own homes um, and potentially save thousands of dollars. Um, I've done it. Um, Michael's done it. Justin's done it. I think most of us have done that. Um, so again, you know, these fees aren't about us trying to milk you guys. Um, they're, they're really just about um, us, you know, trying to keep things together and, you know, as fair as possible uh, and to provide you guys with, you know, the service that we want to provide you with and the assistance and the training and the help and, you know, um, things like that. So um, the, the transaction fees is not going to go into effect until uh, January of 2022. And again, that's only after you cap out. Um, there's, there, it doesn't apply uh, before you cap. It's only after you cap out. Um, uh, so really, for most of us, that's just a few transactions. Um, um, uh, so uh, again, uh, if anybody has any questions about any of those, don't hesitate to call me, email me, text me, um, uh, uh, go through those documents that Mickey has sent you, um, read it all, take take your time. Um, we're eventually soon, you know, probably not too you know, far away, we're going to ask everybody to DocuSign all of that. Um, uh, and of course, you know, we'll keep copies, you keep copies. And um, it's just something that's, that's necessary as we grow. You know, we, we want everybody to be uh, informed and, 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 and clear on, on our rules and our, our regulations. And um, uh, so that, that's going to allow us to do that uh, so that everybody's on the same page. Um,
Anybody have any questions about those forms yet? I know, I know you haven't had a whole lot of time to look at them, but anybody have anything on that? Hey, Chad, are you going to go over the um, agent agreement? And if you did, the, um, there was a plumber here. I didn't hear it, but um, I was had a question on fees upon reassignment of prospects. Sure. Sure. And I, and I, I, I didn't plan on going into detail, um, but I'm happy to answer questions like that. Um, what, um, what Brooke is talking about is if um, uh, Brooke, what page is that on? Um, I'm going to take a stab at it. Talking about it's it's basically what happens if so. Ultimately, you know, our buyers and sellers they belong to the brokerage. Um, you know, technically, even you may bring them yourself, or we may, you know, bring via Zillow. But ultimately, when we bring on a buyer client or a seller client, the it's the brokerage that is is you know um, is ultimately you know has that client. So there are instances where brokers may need to reassign a client. So let's say Justin has got a, a buyer he's working with and you know um, the, they're just not a good fit and and uh, uh, you know maybe Justin says something to that particular buyer that they don't appreciate. Not that Justin would ever do that. I'm just sorry Justin I'm just using it use it as an example, but, you know, just for some reason, the buyer calls me and says, Chad, I've been working with your agent, uh, Justin, um, you know, but I just, things aren't working. I, I, I'm, I, I need to, um, I need to switch agents or brokerages. Well, that's where that fee comes in, Brooke, where what I would do is I would, to try to save the deal from leaving the brokerage altogether, I could reassign that buyer over to, um, you know, uh, uh, Tiffany, um, and pay Justin a 25% referral fee for the time that he had spent with that agent. So it's not something I, I hope, I hope I'll never have to do it and I probably won't, but it's something that, you know, is a possibility. Does that, does that answer your question, Brooke? Yeah. So basically we're already in contracts. The deal's moving along. It's not like you're showing a buyer and then you're transferring them. Like you're in contract on a house already. Well, um, it could happen either way. Um, you know, I, I would hope that by the time you're under contract, you know, it wouldn't happen, but it, it could happen either way. Um, it could happen, you know, yeah, it could happen at any point while a, a buyer's rep agreement is in place. Um, you know, I could potentially have to reassign one of you uh, or, or one of our clients to another one of our agents. Um, but again, you know, it's, it, it's, it's going to be very rare. Um, um, yeah, it sounds more like a situation where you're just trying to save the deal from falling apart when maybe the fit isn't perfect. Right. And right. so in order to do that, you may just say this may be a better fit, but you're still compensating the other party for what the time they put into it. Sure, sure. And, and, and again, you know, it's, it's very unlikely to happen. Um, but, um, you know, that might also prevent that buyer or seller from, you know, submitting a, a complaint to Trek. Um, so if you want to do everything you can to keep that, that client happy, and sometimes it means reassigning them from, from agent to agent. Uh, but I've never had to do it. I don't anticipate ever having to do it, but it's just of those things that's put into to these these agreements um, just in case. Yeah, um, it, it very it very well could be a situation too where you as a as an agent are working with someone and they've just they've just become so difficult that mm -hmm. you can't handle them anymore. Yeah, and for for the benefit of of, of keeping everything um, cordial, <laughs> for yep. for lack of a better word. Uh, just just the reassignment of someone that might be able to step in and calm the situation and allow um, everyone's best interest to be completed or satisfied. Yeah, we've all been there. I know that for sure. We've all been in that situation where we'd like, you know, thinking to ourselves, I can't wait for this transaction because I just can't handle this guy anymore or this gal. Um, um, good, good point. I can see that. Working also in a situation, you know, life happens. And sometimes there's things in your life that come up um, that you don't foresee sure. and you just may not have the energy or, you know, to do it. And so I can see that that may also come in play also where you just, you can't handle it at the moment. You just may have to shift it over to somebody else. So 
but and but also just know that if that if that situation does arise, you know, we're all going to talk about it together and come up with a solution that is good for everybody. Going to yank a client away from anybody, um, you know. Guys, um, I'll do my best to 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 be fair about it, and um, um, you know that 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 amount could potentially change. I don't know, but um, it's really just there to let everybody know that it's a possibility. But uh, one 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 quick question, and then uh, I'm going to let Ryan jump in and say a few things. Um, uh, one one more thing I wanted to bring up real quick um, um, is the buyer's rep agreement. Um, you know, we all have our own feelings about buyer's rep agreements. Um, some of us do them early with our clients. Some of them wait till, um, you know, we were in contract, we write a contract. Um, uh, recently, I've had a couple of situations where, you know, there's been some, some confusion between our agents and potential buyer clients where, um, you know, there wasn't an agreement in place. Um, that buyer goes out their contract and now you know says you know i don't i don't need your help you know anymore um so we've all been in those situations right where we had a buyer who bought without us um and we didn't have a buyer's rep agreement um sometimes we're able to salvage those situations um you know i'm i'm in a battle right now with Harry homes trying to get them to pay us a commission uh on a buyer that we took to them who went under contract but down the line, the buyer decided to to not use us. Um, so I'm 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 in an, I'm in a, you know in talks with Perry Holmes trying to figure that out. Um, had we had a buyer's rep agreement with that buyer, it probably would be a lot easier for me to 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 fight that battle. Um, I'm in another situation right now that rest way beyond um, that, um, and we're looking at potentially. Um, you know, going into arbitration with the Texas Association of Realtors, there's attorneys involved, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot going on. And, and, uh, and soon, I want to talk more about that. Um, it, it has to do with Lisa, uh, nothing that she's done wrong. Um, uh, but, you know, it's a very sticky situation. But there's also a lot of money on the, on the line. Um, and, and we're, after it, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are that are very angry that we're going after that. But it all comes down to the fact that we have procuring cause. Uh, it was Lisa that uh, procured the cause of the sale. Um, these, these she showed these buyers the home for the first time. She wrote an offer. Um, she showed them other homes. Um, she got a prequal letter, and then as soon as she sends the the the, doc, the, uh, the contract out. For signatures via docu sign, they call up another agent. That agent write the offer. Uh, offer gets accepted. Uh, the deal closes, um, and we're like, "Well, wait a minute. You know, we we what about us? You know, um, uh, this 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 again is another case where we don't have a buyer's rep agreement. However, uh, fortunately, we do have procuring cause, uh, and those are separate issues. Um, procuring cause has nothing to do with agency relationships. And, and whether or not we have a buyer's rep agreement. Um, it, but what it does is it, is it helps clear things up. So, um, and, I, and again, I'm not bashing Lisa, I'm not bashing Glenn, um, but had we had a buyer's rep agreement uh, executed with either of these clients, um, they're probably, we wouldn't be uh, where we're at now with the two cases. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to go to, to, to battle um, uh, to, to get you guys paid, but, you all might take a, a, a look at your your you know your methods when it comes to buyer's rep agreement. It's very important as soon as possible to talk to these buyers just to say, you know, this is the contract between you and me. You know, if I'm going to show you homes, if I'm going to help you find a house, I need you to commit to me. Um, we all know that a buyer's rep agreement is not worth the paper it's printed on, um, and, and 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 if if anybody were to challenge it. Uh, it would likely not, you know, work out in our favor. However, what it does do is it is it tells that buyer it it brings it up to that potential buyer that, you know, you're their agent. So if they have any other agents that they're working with or thinking about, you know, maybe their brother-in-law or neighbor, then at that time, you know, and you ask them to sign a buyer, they're going to be like, oh, well, actually, I'm going to use a different agent. So um, uh, it just clears things up. So um, 
again, you know, no, nobody did anything wrong. Uh, I'm just as guilty as, as Lisa and Glenn have with not, you know, getting buyer's rep agreement signed as quickly. Um, because a lot of times, you know, you don't want to scare a buyer away by asking them to sign contracts. And, you know, you want to give it a little time to build up some rapport. Um, and, and in both cases, Lisa and Glenn were, were willing to do that. Uh, they just didn't have enough time. You know, these, these buyers pulled the trigger uh, on the sale of both of these homes so quickly um, that there was no time for Lisa or Glenn to build rapport, to, to sign a buyer's rep agreement, and to really make their clients, you know, understand the process. Um, uh, however, you know, in both cases, we have procuring cause, um, and that means something. That means something legally, um, and, you know, I don't know if we'll go to court in both cases, but in Lisa's case, it's looking like, you know, we could potentially do, you know, go anywhere. You know, right now we're lined up for an operation. Um, at some point, hopefully this month or the next, um, where, you know, um, we'll, we'll have to go before, before a board of, um, of people and, and plead our case and, and show that, that we have the procuring cause, um, which I'm pretty confident that we'll be successful um, in doing, but it's also been, you know, a lot on everybody. You know, uh, it's taken a lot of time for for me, for Lisa. Uh, you know, there's there's people that are hiring attorneys. Um, you know, it's just it's just it's just an ordeal. Um, uh, so you know, we always want to try to prevent that when we can, um, but also know that when it does get to that situation, we've got your back. Uh, Michael and I will do whatever we can to. Um, to support you and, and get you paid. Uh, and that's really what it's all about here is, you know, being fair. Uh, you know, Lisa and Glenn were both um, the reason that these particular buyers purchased the property. Um, another agent shouldn't be able to just jump in there and grab the commission. Um, and it really comes down to uh, compensation offered through the MLS. Well, when, a, when a listing agent lists on the MLS that a particular commission is offered, they're, they're saying, I'm offering this commission to the brokerage agent, broker, whatever, that is the procuring cause of, of this sale. And that's it. Um, uh, it that, that seller's agent is, is, is cheap. They must pay the agent, the broker that has procuring cause. Um, uh, it doesn't always happen. Um, a lot of times it gets swept under the rug and nobody's willing to, to fight for it. But um, uh, in this case, you know, it's a, it's a, in both cases, there, there's a lot, a lot of money involved. So um, we're going to go after it and wow. we're going to ask everybody the right thing uh, and, and see what see what we can do. Uh, anybody have any questions about any of that buyer's rep agreements or any of the things going on? <clears throat> No, no, no. Uh, I'll, we'll talk more about that. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to talk more about it. Um, uh oh, what time is it now? Um, we got ten minutes. Uh, Ryan, Jed, are you are you on? Oh boy, let's see. Let me see. Oh, there he is. He's he's on. Unmute yourself there. Go ahead, Ryan. You got uh, Zoom is ten minutes. Cool. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Good yep. Hi, buddy. How's everybody doing? Good. Doing good. Doing good. Uh, good. Yeah. Good. Doing great. Um, well, I won't take up too much time, but I just kind of wanted to go over and touch on a couple things. Um, you know, one, guys, is, is I don't know if you all have seen the news at all. The market is going up a little bit. Um, you know, not anything substantial, but definitely, you know, if you're speaking to your buyers at all about interest rates and those sort of things, keep it mum, you know, and be positive about it. You know, if you if you tell a buyer that the, the market's going up and that they should panic about interest rates going up, then they're going to panic and, and, and make a thing of it. So more or less, guys, I guess what I want to touch on is the fact that, you know, interest rates across the board are generally still in that, you know, low 3% range. So if you are given general information, guys, just keep it, again, keep it pretty vague and say, hey, you know, interest rates are still at historic lows and then just kind of leave them to the lender, right? You know, whether that be me or whether they're already represented, don't try to play the finance person in the situation. You know, don't put more stress on yourself than you need to. But also be aware that, again, guys, we're still looking at, you know, 3.25% interest rates on 30-year fixed. I mean, that's phenomenal. 
And that's certainly going to boast, you know, bode well for these people who are entering the markets, specifically our first time home buyer clients, you know, because effectively the lower the rate, the lower the monthly payment. So just something to kind of keep in mind that rates aren't going down anymore, you all. So just keep that as mum as possible. And again, if they ask specific questions, just tell them to give me a call. Okay. Um, that's the first thing I want to touch on. Second thing is when you all get a contract, if we're working together, get that thing over to me as quickly as you can. You know, and it doesn't even have to be the fully receipted contract in most cases. I can go ahead and get the loan started and get, get title ordered and, and, and get these third party items ordered just with the non receipted contract. So the, the sooner that I can do that, the sooner that we can get, you know, things like the appraisal ordered or get the loan up to the underwriter. And, um, you know, our turn times are, are, you know, getting better day by day. I mean, I think right now from initial submittal, you know, we may have conditional approval within 72 hours on certain files. So, you know, the sooner that I can get that contract, the sooner that we can provide peace of mind to our clients and say, Hey guys, you know, your loan's been conditionally approved. Let's get to work on clearing, you know, conditions X, Y, Z, you know, and the earlier on in the process that we can get that, I mean, effectively, they're just sitting around waiting for their appraisal to get done in order for us to get the loan back up to the underwriter to close. So just something to kind of be considerate of. Um, just whenever you get that contract signed and executed, just get that thing up to me and, and I'll get to work on it. Um, and then finally, um, you know, in terms of lead conversion, guys, I do want to ask question a question just is there anything that I could be doing differently or better? Um, I know that I don't always, and I've had this conversation with Chad and Michael, I don't always update the notes in FUB when I call and text leads because I think it's sort of redundant in a way. Um, I, I am calling them. I am texting them. I normally, what I do is I won't put a note in there unless I've made some sort of verbal or email text contact with these folks. So if there's anything that I can be doing better, email me or text me or call me specifically and let me know. Um, but just generally to the group, I mean, is there anything that I could do better or, or do differently to help you guys convert these leads over aside from just calling and texting them? And then obviously, you know, you all creating some sort of drip campaign to, to drop them into. Damn. I'm good. I don't, I don't have any comment. No, no. And in all seriousness, guys, I mean, right now we've got, I mean, obviously you guys have seen the lead flow. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty strong right now. You know, I think right now, obviously with the, the winter weather that you, <laughs> you all experienced, uh, obviously that kind of led a lot of people uh, to kind of go back inside. In my opinion, I, I haven't been able to get as many people on the phone over the last couple of weeks. I don't know if you all have had that, that issue, um, but just work through it. You know, I, I've, I'm touching them every day in some sort of way, whether that be email or text. Um, and I feel like we can get a lot of these converted come springtime. It's just, you know, what, what, I mean, what hurdles are you all facing down there other than the fact that inventory is, you know, pretty scarce, um, you know, cause obviously I'm not down there. My feet aren't on the ground. So when I talk to these clients, sort of like my conversation with you all about keeping interest rates, mom, you know, it, is there anything specifically that I need to know about down there that can sort of make me, a little bit more inept to, to be able to have a conversation with them about what's going on. Cause I get a lot of questions from people like, Hey, what do you think of this area or that area? And I'm like, speak to your agent, whoever that is, you know, through mid city, talk to them about that. You know, I don't want to comment on something that I don't know much about. So, you know, is there any, I guess an, another question is there, is there anything that I could, I don't know, kind of tell these folks in essence of getting them back into your all's lap once I've had my conversation, because obviously once I get them pre-approved, I'm just kind of on the you know sidelines eating popcorn, you know, while you guys are in the game finding them a house. So I, I sort of just, you know, lay back and try to collect docs as quickly as I can. So is there anything that, um, you know, from that perspective that I could be doing to, to help you guys in terms of converting them and educating them on, on what is available out there and what the certain market conditions are, you know, in and around the areas that we're selling houses in. Um, anybody? Uh, real quick, Ryan, maybe we could talk to them a little bit about the appraisals and how that that's working yeah. um, to give them a heads up so they're not freaking out. Totally. And, uh, okay. and I don't know how appraisals are going for everyone else, but it's been a shit show for me pretty much on a lot of deals. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's part of going back to like the get, you know, getting the contract in and certain things like that can certainly speed things along. But at the end of the day, you know, 
I'm just getting a bunch of excuses. And like we have the, I mean, I would argue one of the best third party appraisers groups in the country in the United States appraisers group. I mean, their portfolio of appraisers across the country is extensive to say the least. So there's plenty of coverage, but the problem is, is that this refinance boom is still happening. So a lot of people, even outside of people who are buying houses, um, are getting appraisals done, right? They're trying to find out what the value is in their house so they can refinance it and save money. So that's something we're sort of up against because you have these appraisers who are claiming these contracts and claiming these files with no sense of urgency whatsoever because they have all of these different clients that they're, they're you know, trying to cover, whether that be refinance or purchase, they're not really putting any precedent on one or the other. And that's the issue. And so I think that's where that backlog is sort of coming in, where you're not ordering an appraisal in 72 hours, you have it scheduled. And then, you know, within 72 hours from that, you have an appraisal report back. So, you know, I know Brooke and I specifically have a, a deal right now where it's just like this guy didn't go out to the property until yesterday and he didn't even notify us or the third party that he had even gone out there until I heard from Brooke and got a text from Brooke that he had visited the property. And this was a guy who promised the appraisal report last month. Oh you know what I mean? So it's it, things like that right. are putting us in a position where I've got to have Brooke, you know, get out there and, and, and write up addendums and extend the contract and do these sorts of things. So I feel as though the earlier that we can get an appraisal order, like if you guys are in a situation where you know that the house is in good shape, that it's highly unlikely we're going to have any issues come through on inspection. We may want to even look into ordering the appraisal either before the inspection or the day of the inspection, worst case scenario, guys, we can always cancel that and they refund the customer right away. Um, and that's sort of allowing us to hedge ahead and, and sort of get ahead of the curve in the case of like Brooke and I, um, where you got an appraiser who claimed it, who was incompetent, frankly, and, and, and over promised and under delivered. So um, Chad, you have anything to add to that? No, Ryan, uh, our time is about to end. Mickey's saying they're going to cut us off at 11. Um, okay. So let's, let's, let's try to plan another, our next meeting to give you a little bit more time, Ryan. We, we appreciate you though. Yeah, um, no all stuff. Um, let's try to plan something where, you know, you have, you know, as much time as you need, we can ask some questions. We'll, we'll try to do that later on in the month. Um, yeah. But thanks to everybody that, that was here today. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, call me, text me, reach out to Michael, reach out to Mickey. Um, uh, don't hesitate. We're here for you guys. Uh, let's make it a good year. If things are just getting started this year. It's going to be a good year. Inventory's coming. You know, we're going to be selling houses like crazy. Um, let's, let's get everybody on board and, and, uh, and, and into the game. If you're not in the game, let's get together and figure out how to get you in there and um, how to make it a good year for everybody. Sounds good, Shadow. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Yep. Hey, you guys have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.